Rit dye is becoming a very popular way to color and create designs on your concrete or hydrostone candle jars. In fact, it's so popular, everyone and their mother is doing it. Hey mom, what are you up to? Making concrete candles with Rit dye? Hi, my name is Jay Catalano. There is a Rit dye craze going on in the concrete candle jar making world, and it's nuts. Regardless of the pandemonium, I thought it would be great to show you five different ways to use Rit dye for your concrete and hydrostone candle jars. But before I get into that, there are two questions that need to be answered. Number one, is Rit dye safe for concrete or hydrostone candle jars? I spoke to Gabby over at Rit dye to ask her about the safety of Rit dye and using their product making concrete candle jars. And here's what she said. Thanks for reaching out. All of our dyes are non-toxic and will not emit any toxic fumes at high temps. During the dye process, they are typically heated to 140 to 210 degrees Fahrenheit. We absolutely love to see people take projects to the next level creatively. While we cannot guarantee any outcomes on projects, part of the fun of dyeing is the experimental process and creating new beautiful things keep dying. Thankfully, she told me to keep dying and not keep dying. Know what I mean? <music> Number two, can I substitute my water for Rit dye? If you're coloring your concrete or hydrostone candle jar with Rit dye, it's essential not to substitute it for water when mixing with your dry mixture. While it's wonderful to see creativity in the concrete candle jar community using Rit dye, some practices can be unsafe. Cementol and hydrostone require water to initiate its solidification process, and despite Rit dye containing water as one of its ingredients, it should not be used as a water substitute. Instead, treat Rit dye as you would a pigment in your creating process so you can keep dying. No, wait, I mean dying. Just don't die. All right, now that we got that out of the way, I'm going to grab my respirator, my silicone mold with a lid, my Rit dye, and my scale. Let's go. Rit dye fusion. I'm going to add 87 grams of water to my mixing bowl and then slowly add in 345 grams of cementol. Once my dry mix is in the bowl, I'm going to stir that up thoroughly until I get a smoothie-like consistency. Then I'm going to add in 5% of my preferred color Rit dye to my mixing bowl and stir that up thoroughly as well. After I feel it's mixed in, I will add that to my silicone mold and its dedicated lid. Once it reaches the top, I will wait three hours to demold my concrete candle jar. All right, three hours has passed and now it's time to demold my Rit Dye Fusion Cement All Candle Jar. After letting it fully dry, here it is. It's not red like a cherry, but rather a sizzling mauve that's ready to party under the summer sun. And being that winter is quickly approaching, I guess you can say I am doing a little creative foreshadowing. I'm totally loving the results, even though it's not the fiery red I had in mind. But wait, behind the scenes, I created a Rit Dye Fusion candle jar using Hydrostone. And here it is, this came out awesome. It's slightly more pink and vibrant than the Cementol candle jar. Here they are side by side. If you want a pink or mauve colored candle jar, now you know which way to go. Love it. Let's move on. Rit dye marinate. Luckily, we don't have to create a concrete or hydrostone candle jar for this technique unless you don't have any in stock. Why? Because we can just use an already cured one hiding out from the stash. Wait a minute, that sounds illegal. Hiding out from the stash? I, I, think, I think I gotta change my verbiage. I hope no one's listening. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to grab my cement all candle jar and put that to the side. Behind the scenes, I slightly heated up my water to about 140 degrees and added it to my silicone bowl. 
With that said, I'm going to pour the heated water into my plastic container and add in about a quarter of the bottle of Rit Dye. After stirring that up, I'm going to place my cement all jar into the colorful water and leave it there for an hour. 60 minutes later, and now I'm going to remove my Rit Dye marinade and let it dry. And here is my awesome concrete candle jar. It looks like deep blood red, or if you prefer a less dramatic analogy, Regardless, this deep red is simply breathtaking. But wait, I actually did the same thing with a hydrostone candle jar. And here it is. This too came out awesome, but boy does it look different. It looks like a fire engine red or a Christmas red. Here they are side by side. Love how they both came out. Let's move on. Rit Dye Marble. Before I get into making a marble effect with Rit Dye, let me share a little something with you first. If you're new to the world of creating concrete candle jars and you feel lost and just want to improve your skills, I've got something awesome for you. It's called the Winning Formula, a comprehensive course that covers everything you need to know from the basics of working with concrete to mastering your formula through the skillful use of color pigments. This course has got you covered. It's not just about teaching you how to do something, but ensuring you understand it fully so you can confidently take action. The best part? You'll have direct access to me, which means you'll save valuable time, money, and avoid a boatload of headaches. I'm here to support you every step of the way. And in addition to all of that, inside this course, you'll discover an amazing collection of bonus resources that you won't want to miss. None of this stuff is public on my YouTube channel. These extras will take your learning experience to a whole new level and help you become a pro at making concrete candle jars. Check out the link in the description for more details and start elevating your concrete candle jar making skills today. Let's go. To create a marble effect using Rit Dye, I'm going to add 87 grams of water to my mixing bowl and then slowly add in 345 grams of cement all. Once my dry mix is in the bowl, I'm going to stir that up thoroughly until I get a smoothie like consistency. Then I'm going to add a few splashes of Rit Dye to my bowl and lightly swirl that up. Then I'm going to add that to my silicone mold. However, midway through my pour, I noticed I needed to add some more Rit Dye to ensure the marble effect distributes throughout the entire jar. After swirling that up, I continued to pour my mixture into the silicone mold and dedicated lid. Once complete, I'll let that dry for three hours. All right, three hours has passed, and now it's time to demold my Rit Dye Marble Candle Jar. And here it is. This is amazing. I love the patterns that the marble effect left on the candle jar. The best part about marbling is you never know what you're going to get when you marbleize. Love how this turned out, but wait, let's not forget my hydrostone candle jar I created behind the scenes. Voila, this turned out fabulous. It's almost resembling a candy cane, but in a candle jar form. Can you feel the holiday vibes? Here they are side by side. Love it. Let's move on. Rip Dye Triple Dip Splash. In order to create a Rip Dye Triple Dip Splash, you need to get a concrete candle jar from your stack. Stock. <laughs> Once I've chosen my concrete vessel, I'll grab a bowl and pour in some moderately warm water, filling it up to about halfway. Then I'll add in a generous amount of Rit Dye to give my candle jar a deep saturated look. Keep in mind, the more Rit Dye you use, the more saturated your vessel will be. In addition, the longer you have it in the colorful water, the more saturated it will get. Anyway, once my Rit Dye is in the water, I'll stir that up and add my vessel to the Rit Dye water for one minute. When the time is up, I'll remove my vessel, let it dry, and remove a certain amount of Rit Dye water to lower the water line. Then I'll lower my vessel back into the water and leave it inside for a total of five minutes. Once again, when the time is up, 
I'll remove my vessel, let it dry, and remove a certain amount of Brit dye water to lower the water line again. Then I'll lower my vessel back into the water for the third time and leave it inside for a total of one hour. 60 minutes later, I'll take it out and let it dry. And here is my concrete Rit Dye Triple Dip Vessel without the splash. We'll get to the splash in a second, but before we splash it up, here's my Hydrostone Candle Jar as well. Take a look at how they look prior to an extra bit of artistic creativity. You might like it just as it is, but if you like creativity, I like to jazz things up a bit by flicking a little white acrylic paint from my Taclon brush. Why? Because it adds that extra whoa factor. Don't you think that looks awesome? But wait, I also created a Hydrostone version, so let's take a look at that one as well. Not to sound redundant, but this came out awesome too. Let's take a look at those side by side. Sky's the limit, love it. Let's move on. Rit Dye 50-50 with foil. The 50-50 Rit Dye method will require you to grab a vessel from your stock, AKA And so I'll grab a cement all vessel and my Rit Dye. However, I'll need a second color of Rit Dye. Hence 50-50. So in addition to my red red dye, I'll choose a blue color to do this demonstration. The key here is to get a bowl and fill it up halfway with slightly hot water and add in a desired amount of red dye. Remember, the more red dye, the more vibrant. Then I will stir that up and leave my vessel inside for 15 minutes. Once 15 minutes is up, I'll remove my vessel, let it dry for a few minutes and do the same thing with the other blue Rit dye. But I will flip my vessel upside down and accidentally drop my lid in the bowl. Blonde moment, what was I thinking? Anyway, after 15 minutes, I'll remove my vessel, dry it off and present to you my Rit Dye 50-50 concrete jar without the foil. We'll get to the foil in a second. And in case you were wondering, here is the Hydrostone version as well. However, we are not done yet. But before we can move on, we need to let it cure fully to finalize the look. Three days later, and I'm ready to add my silver foil using EarthSafe Finishes Quick Dip Sealer to adhere the foil. The first thing I'm going to do is add my foil on the middle section of my vessel and paint on some sealer on top of the foil. You could use glue, but I like to foil and seal at the same time. My goal is to foil the entire middle section to cover up the 50-50 line. Once I'm done, I'm going to seal the rest of the vessel off camera and present to you my Rit Dye 50-50 with foil candle jar. Look at this burst of awesomeness. I'm absolutely loving the way this came out, but wait, let's not forget we have it in Hydrostone too. Notice how the Hydrostone bleeds color into the other side. Why does that happen? Because hydrostone is more porous than concrete. Regardless, I'm super happy with the results. And here are all 10 of my cement all and hydrostone candle jars using the five Rit Dye methods we just went over. Keep in mind that some of these techniques are easier than others and some of them require a bit more patience. However, if you're going to be creative, don't be afraid to charge a little extra for your creativity. Out of the fantastic Rit Dye 5, which do you prefer best? Don't keep it a mystery. Color me with your comments below. And take a look at these videos that are popping up now. They're gonna help you on your concrete, hydrostone, and candle making journey. Until next time, thanks for watching. Ciao.